Hi there, my name is Gregory Scott, and this is my game, Armored Commander 2. This is a second look at the uh, gameplay and development that I've done over the past uh, few weeks. Um, it's building on the first look that I uploaded a few months ago, and as you can see, the game has developed uh, quite a bit since then. So I'm going to jump right into it by starting a new game. That's fine. So in the early game, uh, in the earliest versions, proof of concept versions and the alpha versions, it's going to be very simple. You're only going to have uh, one choice, and that is playing German forces in the early war, September 1939. It's going to be a very simple scenario and a random assortment of units uh, that are facing you. In the future, there'll be many more scenarios and matchups and um, periods of time, periods of history to choose from, but we'll stick with this for now. So one of the things that you'll notice that wasn't there in the last video is that the screen has changed. Instead of your unit being in the center and everything rotating around you, you see a static background map with uh, your guys down here, your little uh, tank squadrons, and enemy units out here highlighted in red. There's different types of terrain, uh, ponds, which um, your units obviously can't go in unless they're amphibious or boats. You have uh, forests, which are good for cover and which block line of sight. Fields, uh, which block line of sight to a different degree, offer less cover. And then you can see that there's hills, dirt roads, and this map doesn't happen to have any villages, but other maps will randomly have villages as well. In, um, in every part of the game, all the main commands that are available to you are listed right here. And you can use the arrow keys to um, switch up and down. And if there's any extra information um, relating to any of these commands, it will show up down here. If you want to learn anything about any of the hex, hexes on the map, you can uh, move your mouse. If you mouse over any of the hexes, it will show information in this console down here. If there's a unit in this hex and you know about it, you know if, you've, if it's an enemy unit and you've spotted it, you'll see some information. You can also always right click to get further information to see the stats uh, of this unit and to see the image um, uh, depiction as well, which I haven't made um, for some of the enemy units yet. In the future, there'll also be a separate command X for examine, where you can examine um, any of the units on the board. So you can use the mouse if you like, but hopefully in the future, um, keyboard only gameplay will also be possible. Another um, thing you can do with the mouse is left click to select your own units. Um, you can also use the tab key to cycle through them. So at the moment we have, I think a couple squadrons of Panzer 35s. Um, these were the Czech built Panzers that Germany seized and used in the early war. Um, for this period of time, for um, 1939, they're quite good uh, tanks, especially with their front armor, and they have a decent um, 35 millimeter gun. Uh, we also have a pair of platoons of these light armored cars, which are much light, more uh, lightly armored and are just armed with machine guns. But as you'll see, these are wheeled, whereas the tanks uh, move as fast tanks, so that affects how they move around the board. They can use their movement points in different ways to move around the terrain. So I'm gonna jump right into the gameplay. The goal of this scenario is to capture the two objectives that you see highlighted uh, with the four sort of goalposty things here. Uh, there's an objective back here that nobody's captured yet, and there's an objective in the middle that enemy forces have captured. I know that there is a rifle company made up of seven rifle squads in this. I know that there are some enemy units back here, but I haven't gotten close enough to spot them and to figure out what they are. They could be anything from more infantry, armored cars, anti-tank guns, or additionally tanks as well. But I won't know until I actually get close enough to see them. So what my plan right now is to take my heavier, I mean, there's still light tanks, but for this period of time, relatively heavy, uh, heavily armored tanks anyway, move them up to this tree line, see what happens, see if the um, these other units start moving toward me. And I'm gonna use these um, Panzerspot uh, platoons, the, the armored cars, to move up and to try to spot enemy units. They have the recce ability, which means that they're harder to spot, but it's easier for them to spot enemy units. So again, there's no, uh, I'll mention right now, there's no sound effects whatsoever in the game. So all you're gonna have to listen to is my voice giving you the play by play. So let's move up and I'm gonna use the, uh, the keyboard commands. You can always highlight the relevant command and hit enter, but I'll just use the keyboard because I'm more used to it. So my armored car platoon has been spotted um, possibly by the rifle company, possibly by another unit. That's not great because they're not very well armored, um, but hopefully there's nothing out there that can pose a danger to me. The rifle company does not pose a danger to anything armored unless I attack it in close combat. So let's move 
other units up. He's been spotted as well, and let's break through the trees with the tanks. If you'll notice as well, after I do a command, um, the list of commands change. So right now W will move me up. If I change my facing to look at the upper left, now if I hit Q or upper left again, it will move me in that direction rather than change my, my facing. One thing this helps is that I feel it is relatively easy to get into the game, at least to learn the basic commands, because they're always right here, um, listed for you no matter what. The mechanics of the game are a different matter, but the commands um, should always be visible right here. So I've got a couple movement points left for each of my armored cars. I think I'm going to move them up just a little bit further, because I can. Okay, that's movement, so I'm going to hit space. Now we're into the shooting phase. Um, the armored cars are armed with machine guns. They only have a two hex range, so they're not going to be doing anything. But the uh, the Panzer II A's, so the light, the light Panzer and the and the Panzer squadrons have better guns. These guys are armed with 35 millimeter. These guys have a 20 millimeter. 20 millimeter range is uh, four hexes, and it's slightly better at long range than other types of guns. So I'm going to fire off at the rifle company. So I only have one uh, option when firing an infantry area fighter fire. You have to use either use machine guns or HE with these guys. If you just fire an AP round, uh, it's not going to do very much of them. There's seven squads with about five guys per squad. So even just hitting one of them is not really going to shake them up very much. So you need something a little bit more powerful. So I'm going to hit A to do an area fire attack. Boom. Um, up here on the left, you see um, instantly you see um, your total firepower, so all the units are participating, the total firepower adds up to 10. Then you see the modifiers. I'm firing at normal range, um, so I have a minus 1, and I moved this turn as well, so there's a minus 2. All of this gets calculated into possible results. The roll is always a 2d6, 2 six-sided die simulated roll. If I roll an 8, then I force them to take a morale check. If I roll a 9 or more, then they'll lose one step. And the more firepower and the better modifiers I can bring to bear, the better these results uh, will be. For the most part, the modifiers are the ones that really make the difference in this. Um, so thinking about where your units are and using them um, skillfully and tactically is often more important than just massing firepower in your attacks. So let's see what happens in this attack. Nice, I, rolled, I was lucky, I rolled an 11. They're down to, to six of seven steps. They've also accumulated a, uh, a pinpoint. Now pinpoints at the moment, the only effect that they have is to make it more likely that they will be suppressed. Suppressed units can't move and they are much less effective at firing. In the future, I think pinpoints might have a more, um, a more significant effect that they might actually translate to a column shift in attacks coming from units with pinpoints as well. But I'm a little worried. I don't want to make this kind of spiral of doom where you, your units get pinned down and they essentially become useless because um, they're too uh, because they can't um, accumulate enough uh, attack modifiers to actually do anything. So I'm going to throw in a couple more attacks on these guys. Now you see with the 35 millimeter, it's got more firepower. So even with the same modifiers, um, I have the potential of a two-step loss if I roll 11 or a three-step loss if I roll 12. Three, no effect. And the last one you can do an attack is out of range. Um, 37 millimeter gun still only has a four hex range and this guy is just out of range. All right, so I'm gonna hit space to go to the next phase. And what is gonna happen is that very quickly, too quickly, I'm still working on this, um, enemy units are gonna move around the map and possibly also do attacks um, as well. The AI is simple, um, but for now it works. Um, one of the big drawbacks right now is that um, enemy units will never launch um, close assaults. I still need to add in a step to determine whether a uh, assaulting into close combat would be a good thing to do or not. But um, infantry units, if they're in the open, will try to seek cover. If an infantry unit is holding an objective, it won't move, it'll stay put. Um, even though at this point, this infantry unit's just a sitting duck, it just being there is preventing me from capturing this objective. So from their point of view, it's a good thing to do. So I'm gonna hit next phase, I'm gonna um, hand play over to the computer control player and let's see what they do. So rifle company is suppressed. There's a tank company coming down the road, a tankette company, sorry, squadron. 
It's a lot of tanks. All right, and one of the um, tank squadrons is firing at me. So this is a tank at squadron. It's probably a, a, a TK, uh, TKS. These are very small trapped armored vehicles. Uh, it only has three steps. So three vehicles within this unit and it's firing at me. Um, it moved. I also moved in my last turn. I count as a small target because even the uh, even the Panzer 35 is still a, a fairly small tank. I'm in terrain, so sparse forest, and um, uh, its armor penetration is four, whereas I have pretty good armor three, so it's at a minus one as well. So the only the best it can help it can hope for is a one step loss, but there's only about a 2.7% chance of that happening. Um, the only other thing is to force me to take a morale check that might possibly um, that might possibly suppress me. So what's his role? So he did get uh, 11, so that means it adds a pinpoint because it was an effective attack, and it forces me to take a, um, uh, a morale check, which I pass. All right, in the new turn, the first thing that happens is that there's a, there's a recovery phase. If you have any pinpoints, you have to take a morale check. Unfortunately, because my units are just confident, they're not fearless, and I had one pinpoint, he failed, so at this point, this unit is suppressed. What that means is that this unit um, cannot move and its attacks are going to be at, at a disadvantage as well, which isn't great. But let's take a look at what, what's come out of the woodwork. So we have a TKS uh, 20 millimeter, uh, invisible apparently. It's only because I haven't actually made an image for it yet. Let's see, there might be another TKS. Um, no, that's a TKS 20 millimeter. There's a, an armored car. So this is a, um, a, a Polish armored car with a machine gun on it. Haven't seen that yet. Another TKS 20 millimeter. So these are actually pretty good. These are very lightly armored tanks, but they have a 20 millimeter gun. If they can get a shot on either the front armor of the Panzer II or the side armor of the Panzer 35, or any anywhere on the on the armored cars, uh, 20, 20, 20 millimeter gun will do some damage. So not great for me. I'm still curious as to what this one last unit is. Um, not great for me, but at the moment there's not a whole lot I can do. So these armored cars armed with a machine gun. Machine gun does not have any point fire attack. It can't do any damage whatsoever against these armored vehicles. The only thing it can try to take out is this um, rifle company. Problem is, it's also a pretty nice target too, because the, the enemy, the AI units will always try to calculate, try to determine what the most effective attack the attack with that has the potential to do the most damages, and they'll they'll normally pick that one. Um, so if I stick out these guys out in the open, that's going to be a really nice um, potential attack for them to do. So I'm going to hide this guy in the woods, and there he's not going to do anything. And I'm going to send the other unit up, and I'm going to start um, throwing some attacks into here. But I'm going to perch him in the field the tall fields so at least um this unit will get some some protection and the others are going to stay still so that they don't have a movement uh, modifier when they attack so that's it for me so let's do this one first target area fire uh, unfortunately i'm still suffering the attacker moved but as you can see i got into range and these aren't not too bad odds it'd be better if there weren't you know six steps left but that's not too bad odds for an attack one step loss, okay, whittling them down slowly. This other unit, um, I hid him in the woods and he can't actually do anything. This unit right here, originally didn't have a target, but this tank got, tankette squadron has come up. So we'll fire into the into the front. It's, uh, it's at long range. I think it would be normal range if it were just one hex closer. The target vehicle moved. It's a very small target. I mean, the, the TKS is just like a just a tiny little thing with a crew of maybe one or two. Um, and the armor penetration of these guns is not great, and it does have one on the front. So possible results, not really fantastic. No effect. Let's see. Centimeter. Still in effect. I needed two more to even try to get a morale check. And I'm going to hit them again because a 20 millimeter gun might actually do some damage. No effect. So for me, nothing this round. Let's see what the enemy does. 
Rifle Company's feeling better. Recky Squadron is moving up. All right, another attack from a tankette squadron. Possible step loss. One step loss. So I've lost one vehicle out of this Panzer Squadron. Another attack, uh, the tankette squadron out here, um, shooting at my armored car. Tall fields modifier, not really doing all that much. Took a pinpoint, but I didn't lose any steps. And I'm suppressed, so I won't be able to move. Another incoming fire. This is not going well, no effect. All right, my armored car rallied anyway. I'm feeling a little bit outnumbered here, but let's see. Let's see what we can do in this. Four, three. One thing I can do is I can do a close combat. Although I don't really want to move these tanks because they're in a pretty good position um, in the woods. So maybe what I'll do here is I will throw these guys into close combat on there and try to grab the objective. Why not? And let's throw in these guys too. Oh, I don't have enough movement points. Okay, well, I can get in close and, um, and use the machine guns anyway. All right, let's do tank firing first. Excellent. Lucky roll of 12. Uh, Two-step loss, down to two steps. This is going to be less effective because this unit is suppressed. You can see the minus three uh, modifier here. No effect. Last one, 20 millimeter, one of my options. Oh, I can't fire at him because the woods are in the way. So I'll lob off uh, a shell into the infantry. Point. All right, close range MG. No, no. There we go. Not very effective. And close range MG. Extra pinpoint. All right, that's it for shooting. Next up, I have a close combat, so we'll resolve that first. Can't defensive fire, so I get an attack in close combat. Now you see. Um, the modifier that I get is actually a plus four because the combat is assumed to be happening at almost point blank range. One step loss. All right, whittling them down. Now even infantry, now even infantry that don't have dedicated anti-tank weapons can fight tanks in close combat. They use grenades, they get in close, they try to disable tanks, um, but it's dangerous to them. They can actually lose steps as a, as a result. In that case, I won the combat and was able to take the objective, so that's good for me. All right, another incoming attack coming from Ticket Squadron. Good. Another one. Another pinpoint. Another one on the, on the HQ. No effect. All right, so I lost a pinpoint, but I'm still suppressed, which isn't great. And the funny thing about these guys is I've programmed the AI so basic that they, even though with MGs they can't harm any of my units, they still try to get close. And then when they, they get up there, they just kind of sit there because they don't really know what to do. That, I promise you, will be changed in the future. But for now, um, this is what we have to deal with, with these yeah, two units of these armored cars just running out and standing in the way of everybody else. So it's unfortunate, but hopefully in the future it'll be nicer. All right, so they're suppressed because they just lost a close combat. Let's... Push in further with um, close combat from these two guys, and everybody else is just going to stand on fire. So we've got two steps, two, three, and five. Come on, dice, don't fail me now. Ah, uh, that's not great. All right, we're getting there. The other good thing is that as they lose steps, their attacks become less effective. So it's not like a lot of strategy games and RPGs and stuff where even if a unit has one hit point remaining, they're still basically at 
strength, the, the number of steps or the number of vehicles that are participating um, is factored into the total firepower of an attack. So it does it does have an effect in the in the long run. So let's do some machine gun attacks. Extra pinpoint, no help there. Another step lost down to three. Close combat. Can attack. Two step lost down to one step. And has to withdraw. All right, so he moved up and he's doing an attack to no effect. Same target, no effect. Same target, no effect. Now, another thing you'll see here is that there's a system, system for acquired targets. So if you're firing uh, point fire, I think it's just point fire, it might be area fire, it might be any type of gun. Um, if you're firing at a target and neither you nor the target moved, um, and you fire again, you get a plus one because it's assumed that you're kind of homing in and getting more accurate as you as you sit there doing the same attack. All right, so this Panzer, Panzer Squadron has lost all of its pinpoints, but it can't pass a morale check to get unsuppressed. It continues to be suppressed, which is unfortunate. Right, let's continue up the attack here. Only got one squad. Uh, he's only got one squad left. Uh, the other armored car is going to make a run for this objective up here. That's good. One step loss and rifle company has been destroyed. Now because I destroyed it in shooting in my close combat step, all that will happen is I adva advance into this hex and take it. There won't be any combat that needs to happen. So two, two, set them. Effect. One step loss. Another thing you might notice, um, it takes into account the how good the gun is at penetrating armor versus the armor it's penetrating. This um, the calculation for this is still very much in flux and needs to be balanced. I'm not at all certain that having this type of a gun firing at one at uh, a relatively lightly armored vehicle should only give a plus one bonus. It might need to be uh, quite a bit higher, but that'll be part of the that'll be part of the balancing to go, happen later on. All right, we've whittled them down. One step remaining, one step remaining, and the armored cars, which can't do anything, so let them let them do what they like. Of course, there's this huge squadron of five tanks out here, but we can deal with them later on. Another pinpoint. No effect. One step loss. All right, so I've lost a couple tanks, but I'm still alive and I'm about to gain the other objective, which is quite nice. Now, if I can take this objective and hold it until the end of the turn, I will win the scenario. So this armored car doesn't really have anything to do, so I will move it up there. That's fine, and the rest are just gonna stand and shoot. One squadron get down. No effect. No effect. So back to the enemy turn, and if they can't dis dislodge this um, armored car squadron, then the game is over. Another pinpoint. They just keep hammering on this HQ squadron. And that's it. So I captured both, both of the objectives, um, held my own, took out a couple tankettes. Um, most of my tanks actually didn't move around too much, which is kind of a shame, but in this case it just seemed better to leave them in the woods and just fire from where I was. So thanks very much for, walking, uh, for watching. This is a, a preview, uh, preview uh, playthrough of the current in-progress version of my game, Armored Commander 2. If you're interested in the game, you'd like to try, like to try it out, go to armoredcommander.com 
click on either the dev, the development blog, or the little Armored Commander 2 icon in the upper right corner, and you'll find a link to the most recent proof of concept version. All the source code is also available on GitHub. Um, if you search for Armored Commander, you can find it on GitHub as well. So thanks again for watching.